Okay, good morning, folks, and welcome to Stock Charts Today. This is Bob Desmond. What we're going to do is we're going to go over the morning's news events, then we're going to go over the pre-market activity, and then we will talk about the symbols that our members submitted for me to review on video. First and foremost, we have President Xi over in China who spoke overnight. We knew he was going to speak. The futures market, uh, it was up both in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, about a percentage point prior to his speech and the extended gains soon thereafter on a couple of bullet points that he touched upon. So the markets liked what they heard, despite the fact that there were no specifics. Now, to me, this is the rhetorical China. What we heard last night, and you can reference this on Zero Hedge, the one that is acting to undermine us at every corner. The petrol one is the newest weapon for China, Russia, Iran, anti-U.S. dollar alliance. This is reality. The announcement overnight by President Xi lacks specifics. There is no basis in fact as of yet. But the markets are rallying. Now, the Petro one is for real. This is fact. And we're going to get to a chart of the dollar in a moment. But remember this article. And for those not familiar with the Petrowan, it is the first exchange to challenge the U.S. petrodollar, which has dominated the oil markets since the U.S. went off the gold standard, and which has frankly allowed the United States to live well beyond its means for a long, long time. And the chickens are coming home to roost. Lastly, the headline that has me most concerned is the fact that Within a very short period of time, the special counsel, FBI, was able to raid the offices of President Trump's private attorney's office to gather information about Stormy Daniels. You remember I referenced her a couple of weeks ago after she had been interviewed on 60 Minutes. The world survived her interview, but the saga continues. Imagine, in a very short period of time, since Stormy Daniels' name became a household name, the FBI has been able to seize the documents of a sitting president, yet they can't get Hillary Clinton and the merry band of Obamaite misfit crony thugs in the White House under sworn testimony over the course of years. And you may be saying, you know, I, we don't watch this video in the morning for political commentary. When it, I, I do this video, and I don't, I don't talk politics with members unless, of course, it impacts the markets directly. And in this case here, when you have a sitting president that is under siege at every corner, and in this latest instance appears to be pushing him into a circumstance where we, it could result in a constitutional crisis, especially if he fires either Jeff Sessions which, unless Sessions is doing some amazing work behind the scenes in getting Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration, including Holder, Susan Rice, who now works for Netflix, he should be fired, which, since he recused himself from the Mueller investigation, wouldn't be such a constitutional crisis. But if he fires Mueller, have no doubt, you're going to see this market sell off like you haven't seen it sell off before. And I followed Donald Trump since the Wolman Rink War with New York's Mayor Koch back in, what, 1980. And this guy is ruthless. There will be retaliation. Let's get to the charts. Okay, looking at the pre market activity this morning, the Dow futures are up 268 points, 1.12%. We did break out above the. Resistance level on a four-hour chart going back to 4.4. Four. We've been consolidating ever since. We gave up a lot of our gains yesterday. You've heard that the sell-off was mainly due to the raid on the president's attorney's office. Uh, I didn't hear about that raid until well after the market closed. So I'm suspect of that statement. That was the New York Times published headline. And that was published well after the market close. So no doubt we're basing here. We should expect an up morning. But as I've been saying, folks, watch for the sell-off. Watch for the sell-off. If we don't get it, 
Perhaps we'll get another follow through day tomorrow. But this is not, meaning triple digit up mornings, it's not what bottoms are made of. Counter trend, bull market rallies within the context of a bear market, yes. But they are short lived in nature. The SP 500 also pressing higher this morning, about 1.12%. When I look at these charts, it really doesn't matter to me where they're trading per se right now. What matters is where we appear poised to close. And to be honest, I added two shorts across the board yesterday. And if we get a failed rally today, I'll be looking to add more. The NASDAQ also broke out and above resistance yesterday. And we appear poised for a continuation move higher. We have not yet taken out yesterday's highs on the news out of China on any of these indexes. Now getting to the dollar, remember the article I just went over about the petrol wand. The dollar is tanking this morning. You can see that the 90 level is now acting as resistance and now it's a fight to find a floor. What should do well? Should being the operative word. Gold, which is down on the morning. But what we're looking for here on gold is a major breakout of this base. So we put it in a double bottom setup here. The W formation off of, what was the low here? Let's call it 1323. We have a W formation. Now what we're looking to do is to clear the pivot point. If we clear this pivot point, we'll challenge the highs of the 26th. But what we need is for the dollar to continue to weaken. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Wow, down at 67.55. There's not, there's not much to talk about here. Uh, the trend is clearly down. Lethargic trade, I would avoid. It looks as though the path of least resistance remains down for Bitcoin. Let's take a look at oil. Oil on the news out of China is rallying. We are leaning into the three standard deviation Bollinger Band. Expect a pullback here in the short term anyway. Let's get to member stock chart requests. Okay, let's kick things off with the XLP. I went over the XLP over the weekend. As a matter of fact, I went over a few of these over the weekend, except for Facebook. So on a weekly basis, we rallied yesterday, but we backed off of this upper band of resistance. So... Going into the week, I was bullish on XLP. I'm still bullish on it. However, we don't have a breakout yet. And after a sell-off like this, I would I would side on using a breakout on a weekly basis rather than daily basis. So I, I'm a bystander here on XLP. Let's take a quick look at the daily chart. So here was our rally off of the lows. It was a dead cap bounce. Resistance above is noted by these topping tails. Now we're pulling back. I think what we need is a double bottom retest or at a bare minimum, a higher low. And then perhaps you could scratch the itch if it holds by opening up a position and then adding more on a rally up and above 53.22. Until then, I'd be a bystander here. Baidu, we were looking to short Baidu going into the week. We're still looking to short Baidu depending upon how it appears poised to close out the week. We have both lines on Stokes trading down below 50 on a weekly basis. What does that tell us? What have we learned over the course of our trading career? When you have both lines on Stokes trading down below 50, rallies tend to fade. We have lower highs on RSI. We closed off of the highs of the session yesterday, and we are still down below resistance. So, if anything, Baidu is looking more as is short from a risk-to-reward entry point than what it did over the weekend. Why? It's because I know exactly where to put my stop loss. So I keep my loss small rather than trying to short on a Friday afternoon, hoping that he get a continuation breakdown. No, we would rather wait for a rally up and into a resistance level, short into that resistance level, put a stop right above it, keeping our loss small. Daily chart. Now, the daily chart yesterday, we did rally. We closed higher on the session. We have a doji star formation, so it can go either way today. If we get a continuation move lower, we could look to short into that weakness. But if we get a continuation move higher and we appear poised to close above 228.50,
We avoid. We don't short. I wouldn't necessarily buy just yet. I'd rather see how we appear poised to close out the week. And given the news out of China last night, there may be some warm and fuzzies out there looking to buy the shares. So I wouldn't necessarily fight them today anyway. They may win the day. So let's see how they close out the week. Facebook. All right, so Zuckerberg is going to be on Capitol Hill, I believe two days worth of testimony for the next couple of days. Mr. Congeniality himself, who has been taking charm lessons in preparation for his testimony, and Lord knows he needs them, may just pull off a miracle at Contrite, and we may get a rally on Facebook, but I think that rally is going to be short-lived given all the horrible news coming out of that company and the admission that we're going to see an impact to earnings for all of their security upgrades. Now, daily chart, we rallied yesterday. We closed off the highs of the session. We have resistance at 161.57. If we're unable to clear that resistance level after he's done with his testimony on Wednesday, the shares may just be a short but I would wait until after his testimony before I look to short the shares. Just in case, good old Mark pulls a rabbit out of his hat. The FXP weekly chart, this puts you short of China. I'm loving the setup here on a weekly chart. But will the news out of China ruin this breakout on a weekly basis? Right now, we're retesting the breakout point. We may see some pressure on these short shares of China today, perhaps even into tomorrow. So we'll watch and see how they close because if if the market is accurate and the rally this morning and yesterday was on a diminished concern about a trade war with China, well then, you should see these shares collapse today. What if they don't? What if the rally fades and the FXP holds support and in fact begins to rally? That will be a tell and we'll be watching to look to put on a long trade. Daily chart. We're holding a breakout in RSI. Stokes is still threatening a breakout. We did have a breakout point failure yesterday. What does that mean? It means that we broke out on Friday. We couldn't hold the breakout on a daily chart and we broke back down. That is a breakout point failure or a bull trap, whatever you want to call it. Call it cupcakes. It's not good. So we need to see either A, a pullback and a retest of support and a close above it, or B, a recapture of this upper band of resistance. We will not buy within this trading range. That's it for this morning, folks. Everybody have a profitable trading day. Don't chase the futures and be well.